Because today's me. Targeting Lebanon. Israel is vowing to continue those strikes. Biden's UN farewell. To address climate change, artificial intelligence, and escalating conflicts. Gulf storm intensifies. By Thursday, making a landfall at the Cat 3. Good morning, I'm Steve Kathan with the CBS World News Roundup. Mass evacuations are underway in southern Lebanon amid Israel's stepped-up air campaign against Hezbollah. There are also growing fears of a possible ground invasion. Here's CBS's Chris Livesay. Wave after wave, missiles landed across Lebanon. 1,600 strikes in all, according to the Israeli military. The attacks continued overnight setting fire to buildings and homes. Hundreds have been killed and thousands wounded, according to Lebanon's health ministry. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said this of the militant group Hezbollah. It placed rockets in your living rooms and missiles in your garage. Those rockets and missiles are aimed directly at our cities. Cars choked the highways as people fled into the night, looking for shelter in schools and anywhere they can find it. A ground invasion is almost certain, says retired Israeli Army Colonel Kobe Marone. If Biden military is going to like it? No. But they understand when 2 million people right now are under attack, Israel should do whatever we can to stop the fire. The United States is sending what is a small number of additional troops to the Middle East as the violence escalates. CBS's Charlie Daggett at the Pentagon. That decision to send in additional troops is to bolster more than 40,000 American troops that are already there. The State Department now urging all Americans in Lebanon to leave the country while commercial flights are still available. President Biden's United Nations speech today is expected to touch on the Mideast conflict and other trouble spots, too. CBS's Weijia Jane. Biden will highlight America's role in defending Ukraine's sovereignty and expanding NATO, as well as managing competition with countries including China. Biden is also expected to talk about all his efforts to broker a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. Six weeks till Election Day. CBS's Caitlin Huey Burns is in one of the key presidential battleground states, Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Rallying support in the Keystone State, former President Donald Trump focused on his campaign's two key issues. The economy. I will get Pennsylvania energy workers pumping, fracking, drilling. And immigration. You have to get them the hell out. Vice President Kamala Harris is considering a visit to the southern border later this week when she campaigns in Arizona. Both campaigns are on a battleground state blitz this week, with Harris returning here to Pennsylvania tomorrow and Nevada this weekend. Trump will stop through Georgia, North Carolina, and Michigan. New information on the man accused of the apparent golf course assassination attempt targeting former President Trump. Authorities say Ryan Ruth wrote a note months earlier saying he had planned to kill Trump. And CBS's Manuel Bojarquez tells us, According to the prosecutors, in his vehicle on the Sunday he was arrested, they found several phones and a passport. And one of the phones, according to the investigators, had a Google search for how to get from Palm Beach over to Mexico. Prosecutors say more serious charges will be filed soon against Ruth. Now to Birmingham, Alabama, where police have yet to make arrests after the weekend mass shooting that left four people dead. CBS's Christiane Benavides spoke with the mother of one of the victims. She had a mom who loved her dearly. That was my best. That was crazy. Candace Kemp's 21-year-old daughter, Anitra Holliman, was one of the four people killed Saturday night. You could have found out if they died in the world. Anitra's mom says her daughter was an innocent bystander. I made an innocent party. Police say they're investigating whether any of the suspects were armed with a so-called Glock switch, which can turn a semi-automatic weapon into a fully automatic one. Birmingham's mayor says these federally banned devices are a growing menace in his community. If you have lax gun laws or no gun laws, you put this hand behind my back. If you put us in a situation where the gun switches are easily accessible, then you put this hand behind my back. Four minutes after the hour. Well, that's today's news. Today's news. I didn't hear any good news, did you? I didn't think so. I guess it's all about perspective. The glass is half full. Well, as always, I'd like to thank you again for coming along with me on these Dash Cam News Adventures. You know the drill. Peace, love, and all that hippie jazz. Bye-bye, everybody. It's 63 degrees.